What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another video. Thank you for tuning in. Today, it's all about chatbots. And what I'm actually going to do is we're going to create an entire series documenting how to create a chatbot for any contracting business. Now, whether that could be plumbing, that could be roofing, that could be home renovations, anything that is just a more of a service-based business, this will be for that. We're going to go through the, all the entire process from what tools and why you should even bother making these sorts of bots to the tools to use, to actually making a plan of what the thing is going to look like, building it, and lastly, how to actually integrate it, whether you're an agency who are building these bots for other companies or you're a contractor yourself looking to actually build this for yourself. Now, my name is Tahav. We've been doing specifically roofing marketing for the last year, and we've recently integrated AI into it, which is a really exciting new feature. If you want to learn more about that, feel free to either hit us up on our email or just leave a comment down and we'll try to reach out to you as soon as possible. So I'll get my face out of the way and I want to go over the power of AI chatbots and really what is the whole point of it? Because a fair question I think most people will have is just, well, why should I even bother? What's the whole point of this? That's a fair question. I think there's, I won't read them verbatim from the screen, but I think the four biggest advantages, you've got availability 24 seven, no coffee breaks, no holidays, no, uh, sick days. It is always available. The second part of it is probably the actual cost effectiveness of it all. The problem of, uh, or the problem that we saw using chatbot, it's really to not miss anyone. And it sort of ties in with everything else. But when you're out on the field, actually working on jobs, handling staff, dealing with customers, because most contractors aren't just sitting around waiting for their phone to ring or waiting for somebody to text them. You're out all there. You're working. But the customer doesn't know that. And for them, they're just saying, well, look, I don't, I call this company or I texted this company and they didn't get back to me. So I guess, I guess they're just not there. That's the sector that we're hitting. And that, all those people, that business slipping right through your fingers. Never miss anybody is the slogan that we actually use. It's also very, very scalable. Meaning that even if tomorrow, for example, there's a roofing, you're a roofing company and you've got, uh, there's a huge hail storm, especially if you're like in the south. East. If you're if you're in the south of the U.S., you've got hail and tornadoes and all this every year. This is scalable to an unbelievable degree. You can have ten times the number of customers asking the exact same thing, and nothing would break. And the last part, which kind of it, a big click that we've known for the people we've talked to about this, it's a lot of contractors unfortunately will spend, or fortunately in this case, will spend so much time, so much energy, so much money into their website. They'll pay other companies thousands of dollars to make them a really nice website to get ahead of their competitors. The thing is, or a misconception, is that your customers, the main thing they're going to do whenever they go, and you can check this or double check my words by simply going on your analytics and look at the amount of people that go on your website. How many leave the main page? Most people, they're looking for a very specific piece of information if they're going to go to your website. You're going to go see the landing page, see that it's legit. They might read some reviews. And that if they don't find any information relating to what they want to build directly there, they're not going to bother searching it up or going through all the subcategories and categories. They're just going to say, okay, well, I'm assuming they don't do that. Or they're going to go find somebody else who does present that as the main thing they do. But and I'll, I'll see people with 300 pages worth of content about every single minute nuance when it comes to, especially to roofing. The differences between like eco roofs and metal roofs and shingles. And they'll go on and on and on, but nobody ever reads them because they don't even know they're there. Chatbots, they can simply ask, hey, what's the difference between that and this? Or am I eligible for an insurance claim? How would I know? What are the best insurance companies to deal with? Our bot actually makes your website genuinely useful to your customers, and it words it in a way that is easy to understand for them as well. Customer service is a huge, huge part of AI chatbots and their purpose. The, from the personalization that you get, meaning the answer they're looking for on their own terms. There are a lot of nuances and a lot of different variabilities. I think in most people's cases, they like to think that their case is special, meaning that's the reason why they call you the first or they texted you. They want to know, okay, but what are my case? That's the unfortunate part about websites in general, that they're very cookie cutter, which means they have to target the, the broadest audience to be able to make sense to anybody. But with chatbots, you get that personalization back without having to spend all the money, the time, especially the time training the staff on these, uh, on these banal questions that you get all the time with just maybe a couple of like little details sprinkled in well look my roof is metal but it was installed in 1988 does that change anything 
That information is probably written somewhere. It could be a lot of model loops, but just people aren't going to bother looking through. Also, you'll see multi-channel support. Now, this is a bit more advanced, but a lot of these AI bots can actually be integrated throughout different channels, from your Facebook, your Instagram, to your email, even to uh, obviously your website. And lastly, as far on your customer side of things, the faster resolution time is a huge benefit to them. Even if they miss, even if you miss their call, or even if you, like, it could be 2 a.m. They, they can text somebody. They're going to get an answer within a like, few seconds. They're going to answer. The cost of chatbots, it is really minute compared to the value you actually get out of them. You spend less time on support, especially for a company that is heavily reliant on your customer service team. This is going to be a huge burden because the thing is that this is not removing their jobs. It is just making their jobs more valuable because a lot of the times, the complex task, this will replace that. If somebody having a really complex problem, they need some, a human to fix it. But spending all, their, all, all day on the phone texting, People who are asking about very basic questions does not, any, does not add any value to your business. Get rid of that and allow your employees or allow whoever deals with customer service to actually spend their time doing, doing more complex or more difficult tasks that require more attention. One of the huge differences you'll notice with chatbots is the lack of human error. Sure, while well, bots have their own issues, there is never an element of emotion that comes into it. It never wakes up on the wrong side of the bed. It never forgets to drink its coffee. It doesn't have to go on break. It doesn't get tired. It doesn't get burnt out. It's just answering questions all day, which means that everybody gets the same answer if they ask the same question. Nobody's treated differently. Nobody's treating worse. Everybody's treated with the respect consistently. Then you've got data collection and optimized marketing. These are more advanced topics as well, but as people go on and they keep talking to this bot, well, you'll notice actually really interesting. A lot of people, especially if you tell them that this is an AI bot, they're going to try to break it. They're going to try to ask it a bunch of different questions. Now, they think they're actually ruining your business, but in reality, they're giving us more information about the thing that people actually want to know. They're going to ask a more complex question. And over time, they'll see, okay, well, this is what trends. This is what people actually want to know when they come to my website. Why don't they just put it on the landing page? And then you're getting even more of that sector because the information, think about it from the user's perspective. Let's say you had 100 people who asked the same thing, and you had one more person who was probably going to ask the same thing as well. But if what if that answer was the first thing they found when they hopped on the website? They would be like, oh, this is exactly what I'm looking for. If a lot of people are asking about insurance claims, and the first thing they see when they go on your website is, we are experts at insurance claims, assuming you are, they're going to say, these are the guys that I've been looking for. This is exactly what I need to know. That's part of the data collection. You can understand what your customers want, what your market wants from you. And from there, you can also deal with marketing. And you can go into, okay, well, this is what people are looking for. Let me advertise to that sector as well. Now, I just want to go over a quick couple of misconceptions about chatbots. And I'll list it three here. But the most flagrant one is that chatbots are too expensive to implement. I would have agreed maybe a couple of years ago, and you'll notice that my answer is pretty much the same for all of them. But a couple of years ago, maybe. But now, you'll see during this, the, the, the duration of the series, some of the tools are free. You can do this for free effectively. It'll take a bit of time, but within certain criteria, a lot of the tools are genuinely free. Then you've got chatbots are difficult to manage and implement. This, same as last time, is a couple of years ago, maybe, but now a lot of it is automatic, meaning the fact that you're, a lot of the information of your actual bot is based on your website, meaning that when you update your website, by default, the bot updates as well, because that's where it gets its information from. If you change material that you use, bot already knows about it. Implementing it, now I'm assume, assuming that either you've got a developer or you yourself just know a little bit about how websites work, you can install it yourself within a couple of clicks. It is about four lines of HTML code. It's really, it, they've made the process so simple to lower the barrier to entry and to give this technology to everybody. And chatbots are impersonal and unhelpful, which by nature of it, the whole point of Chat GBT and AI in general, as like with this huge trend that's come up, is LMP or natural language processing, which is the technology of understanding human language. That's the impersonal part. That's what made it difficult beforehand. But now computers have gotten smart enough where they can understand what somebody is saying. They can understand not somebody is saying, but the intent behind what somebody says. And that includes sarcasm, it includes irony, it includes hyperbole. All of these things that before your country would just get stuck on, and that's what made it very, very full of friction and very impersonal, these problems, um, the ma majority of them have been solved. And you'll see as we go along how intelligent these, these robots can become.
building and launching your own chatbot. Now, there's three main things you're going to have to understand here. It's, well, first of all, it's understand your business process or where does this fit? Where are you? What are you using this for? Is this an internal tool that you want? Maybe you've got new staff that are coming in and you want them to have an access to a database of questions and answers. Is it for lead generation? Are people going on your website? Is it for mainly Q and A's? Do people have a lot of questions before they buy from you? There you go. Are you missing a lot of leads because maybe you uh, you're, you're working on the field during the whole day and then when you're done, well, you're going home, right? So people can't really reach you. Well, you can book appointments directly here. Second part is understanding the use cases, which kind of ties into what I said initially about what is the purpose of the bot? Is it to book appointments? Is it to ask questions? And last but not least is really just how do you choose the right tools in order to do this as effectively and as simply as possible? Because we're not here to create more headaches. We're actually here to remove the workload. And what's next? It's, as I mentioned, there's going to be a video series. This is the first of probably either four, four or five. And the next videos are probably going to be the biggest one where I'm actually going to go into the different software that I use. It's going to be very similar to the previous video, but this one's going to be a lot more in-depth. It's going to be a lot more presentation style with why we're doing that and why we're doing this. And it's going to also going to go through the main thing of what we want your customers to do, which in most cases is to book an appointment. After that, we've got Q&As. That's how do we handle questions, where we're going to get the information from. Then you've got scheduling or the any sort of extension that you can use in order to book clients directly into your calendar. Beyond that, you've got complaint handling, which if you've seen the previous video, I also spoke about that. It's going to be very similar to that. Remember, anybody who heard the word components is going to come up here. And last but not least, we've got the UI or integration part, meaning, okay, well, we've built it. Now let's make it look nice and let's make it fly. So I, I hope you appreciated this. I hope, uh, I think this is the beginning of a really, really cool series. And I'm looking forward to it. If, by the way, if you have any questions or any concerns, please either feel free to leave them in the comments or just shoot us an email at team at all. Might. We'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.